my name is Monica Rial. I'm a voice actress. That explains the whole thing. Uh, I am a voice actress, ADR director, and a script adapter. And I've worked originally for ADV Films. And I've since worked for Funimation Entertainment. I've done a little work for Bang Zoom. I've done a little work pretty much everywhere. Um, some of the biggest shows that I worked on, Bulma and Dragon Ball Z, Kai, and the new movies. Uh, there's so many. Fairy Tale, I play Mira Jane. Rosario and Vampire, I'm Yukari. Uh, Michiko and Hachin, yeah. I play Michiko and Michiko and Hachin. Uh, Excel Saga, I play Hyatt. Uh, Shiro and Dead Man Wonderland. Tsubaki and Soul Leader. Oh, gosh, yeah! I'm Mitsuki and Beyond the Boundary, which just came out. I am Moa and Show by Walk. Sakura and Tsubasa. Gosh, you guys are better at this than I am. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The cameraman just got really excited. <laughs> so yeah, I've done, oh, has anybody seen Gangsta? Okay, that's my new favorite character. I play Sig in Gangsta, and she's like Harley Quinn, only, only more hardcore, if you can believe it. Uh, so yeah, I've done all of that, and then I've adapted some shows, and I'm just gonna let you guys do the tough part. I'm gonna let you ask the questions, and I will give you answers. How's that? Here's the problem, though. If you don't ask me questions, I get to ask you questions. <laughs> and that's how it works. <laughs> Who has a question? There's one right back here. Hold on just a second. Yes. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. Well, I think what happened is, for those of you that don't know, Sentai is basically ADV. It's pretty much the same people. Yeah, it's ADV 2.0. So ADV kind of went and went into flames. And then like a phoenix, from the ashes came Sentai. And as things started out, they didn't have a lot of time or energy or financial support in order to spend the time that was needed. Um, now, luckily, they're really focusing on quality of product and making sure that everything is up to you know, former ADV standards, if you will. Uh, so there's more time involved. Like if you, if you think of some of the early shows that we did for Sentai, like High School of the Dead. High School of the Dead, 12 episodes. I recorded all of Shizuka in six hours. All 12 episodes. That's why when people are like, hey, you remember that part in High School of the Dead when you said this to that part? I'm like, no. I remember I'm Shizuka and I've got giant boobs and I drive a bus. <laughs> Go me. <laughs> because it was so quick and we had to move that fast because in order to get it out they needed the uh, they needed the financial support of you know having products sell in order to be to turn around and be able to spend more time so we're lucky now in that we get to spend more time on the products so stuff like beyond the boundary um, I'm trying to think about what I can talk about that's out yet. oh stuff that's on uh, tsunami like a got kill and parasite they're able to really spend that time like they used to back in the day so I'm happy to see that I'm glad that the fans are giving them another shot because I know when a lot of stuff came out, like Penguin Drum especially, everybody was like, oh. And now it's like, hey, look, we had to get it out as fast as we could, and now we're really trying to spend time and put some love into it. Oh, thank you. It's a fun show. It's a really, if you guys haven't seen Majestic Prince, it's really good. I just loved that the, uh, the trailer came out and I didn't say a word. All I did was go, oh, and everybody went, that's Monica Real. I'm like, that's kind of scary when all you have to do is breathe and people know it's you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, an ultimate otaku teacher. I love that uh, I play uh, canon. Yeah, and so she's like got the quintessential anime voice, and everybody's like, I wonder who it's going to be. And then when I opened my mouth, they were like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, it works. You had a question. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm the big Smite fan. Oh, yay! Last year, I met you as hell. This year, you have a new skin for Yes! That Same line as the other. <laughs> Oh yeah. How much fun did you have 
I had so much fun. So those of you that don't know, I'm in a game that's called Smite, and it's all about the Norse gods. And then what happens is there's all this downloadable content, content where the, the, the gods get like different skins and stuff. And so for the character of Bastet, there's this kawaii pop version, which is the most Japanese-centric, crazy anime. So when they sent me the audition, I was kind of like, do I really have to audition? Because I know what Chris is going to do. <laughs> so uh, when I got it, the only thing that I didn't know was the Nyan 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 song. I, they had to play it for me in the booth, and I was like, oh, you want me to sing the whole song? And they're like, pretty much. I'm like, okay. So it was a lot of fun, though, because I got to do uh, what I'm so used to in anime. And they it was fun because they were so surprised. They're like, wow, this is so easy for you. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you guys don't watch anime. You don't know that this is what I do on the weekly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, wow. Oh, fun. See, yeah, I, we don't get any of that knowledge. It's kind of weird what we do get and and how it comes through the game. Like, I didn't even know what she looked like. I know who Nor, you know, Norse mythology. I know who Hell is. She's the guardian of Hell, and la di da di da. And she's got a good side and a dark side, and so I I knew that much, but I had no idea what she looked like. And when I finally saw the animation, I was like, I'm cool. I'm really cool. <laughs> I remember the cookies, because everybody makes me say that. <laughs> I can't say it right now, because it's during the day. Maybe later. Um, but yeah, a lot of her taunts and stuff are a lot of fun. And we're still, it's continually, I don't know if I, I can't say much, but I will say it's continuing on. It keeps going. Um, it's the same. <laughs> so far, it's the same. But um, I don't know. I should probably stop talking before I can chill. Yeah. Thank you! I'm so excited! I've got a big sparkly ring! Yay! Yay, thank you! I've been very lucky in that somehow people find me. Like, I don't actually, I should. I'm a bad example of an actor. If you were an actor, you should be out there promoting yourself and looking for work. Instead, I just do what I, I like the work that I have, and so I stick in that genre, and then they kind of come find me. Yeah, they'll say, hey, we need this person, or um, does anybody know somebody who could do this? Oh, yeah, call Monica. So I don't know how that happens, but I'm very lucky. Would. Just in case, just in case. I'm very lucky that that does happen. Um, that being said, I've enjoyed all of those venues so much that I have kind of thought about looking more into, you know, like Western animation and that kind of stuff. It's hard though because I'm in Dallas and I'm in Texas. And so we don't have a lot of that Western animation and we don't have as many opportunities, but I don't want to live in LA. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, I kind of like where I am now. Like, I've got a good life in Dallas. I'm comfortable. I've got good friends, and my family's not too far away. I don't know if I want to ditch all of that to go out to L.A. to maybe be on a Saturday morning cartoon. Maybe. So, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of settled in my ways now, but I'm all for trying new stuff. Um, I work with an agent. I have a talent agent in Houston, and so I do a lot of commercial work as well. You guys don't have Albertsons grocery stores down here, do you? Oh, you did? Well, I do the voice commercials for Albertsons. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of, this week at Albertsons, you can get strawberries, four pounds for $5. That kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's not as much fun, but that kind of pays the bills in between the anime and video game gigs. So you get used to it. But yeah, I would love to do more of that, the Western animation and the, the novels and stuff like that. I just haven't had time. Yes, Sonic. Oh. Oh yay! Thank you. Oh, she's sweet. Oh, thank you. 
I've really enjoyed working at Funimation. Uh, I started there way back in like 2002, 2003 on a show called Kitty Grade. And it was right after they had done Fruits Baskets. Fruits, fruits Baskets? <laughs> it's plural. Okay. Fruits Baskets. And, uh, and I think that was it. It was like the next anime after there was Dragon Ball, Yu Yu Hakusho, Fruits Basket, and then Kitty Grade. So they were still relatively new to this whole, oh, this is a Dragon Ball thing. Um, so it was neat to be a part of that change because I had been working at ADV for many years. And so I kind of came over there and I'm like, oh, this is different. This is so different. Um, but as they got to do more anime and it progressed and people kind of grew into bigger roles and they added more people to the roster and found actors from all over, um, it's really kind of become a neat little group of, group of folks. I mean, we still have new folks that come in and we embrace them and love them too, but that core group of people that's been there kind of since DBZ and Kitty Grade in that early day, like it really is kind of like a little family because you get to, you work with everybody so much. Um, that being said, there's still a lot of people that I haven't met that work there, and I feel bad because I've been in a lot of shows with them, and I have no idea what they look like. Uh, but I really enjoy working over there. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, everybody's very chill. Like, there's not a lot of competition. Not that there was at ADB either. I think it's just a Texas thing. Like, we don't compete. I don't, like, stare down Lucy Christian and go, I'm going to get this role, not you. Ah. It's actually the opposite. We're both like, hey! playing the friend and you're my best friend yay woo um everybody's very supportive it's like it's a really good environment you know stuff happens every once in a while and you just go woohoo and move on and then you focus on the positive but everybody there has been really awesome um I love the, the pr production teams on both sides like there might be people that make business decisions that you're like I don't know where you're coming from but the production people are all really cool and that's what matters who else has questions? Yes, ma'am. There's so many. Um, uh, I like uh, the diet episode, probably is my favorite. <laughs> Just because I still have people going, you didn't really do that voice, did you? And I'm like, oh yeah, oh, yeah I did. It was so much fun. Uh, so yeah, I'd say probably... Why do I feel like this couch needs to be deeper? My couch at home is like a, a bed couch, so I'm used to like being able to put my feet up. Excuse me, y'all. I'm gonna redecorate. <laughs> this is this is where I wear why I wear leggings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't have to help me in my laziness. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh, this just got awesome. <laughs> er, awesome er. Oh, yeah. Totally different vibe now. Hey. Uh, Panty and Socket. Yes, I loved the diet episode. I thought that was super fun. Um, gosh, what else? Anytime just getting to work on that show because it was so much fun. I got to hear Ian. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't get to hear what Chuck actually sounds like because he's so far in the background and he's so, like, mixed that you every once in a while you'll hear, like, Chuck, Chuck, Chuck. That's it. I got to go in like second after Ian, so I heard all of the crazy chucking that he would do. And <laughs> that sounds really bad. Uh, okay, good. I was like, that's not Ian, is it? No. Uh, <laughs> so I got to hear all of the crazy chucking that he would do and the ridiculousness, and he really like went for it. Like he was, he was in it to win it as Chuck. And um, I would tell him all the time, I'm like, I know that people aren't gonna hear it, they're not gonna know, but I know, man. I know the love and the effort that you put into Chuck. So that was kind of cool. I also liked being, I was usually one of the first to record because it was very taxing vocally and like energy wise. And Chris and Jamie and some of the other folks were not as used to playing those high energy characters. And I was like, bitches, I do this every day. <laughs> Welcome to Monica's world. So <laughs> I would usually be the first one to come in because I could do more than three hours at a time. And uh, yeah, I, I would love hearing people's reactions because I didn't actually get to be there, but hearing people's reactions to the things that I would say. Um, I love that so many people were so upset for me having to say four letter words. I'm like, you obviously don't know me that well if you think that bothers me. Uh, but yeah, it was cute because everybody's like, Monica, I'm so sorry that they're making you say those things. That's really horrible. And I'm like, yeah, I know, right? 
how dare they make me curse? I feel like a horrible person. <laughs> Meanwhile, in traffic, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so yeah, I like to play that off. That was fun. But definitely the diet episode, and I'd say my other favorite uh, episode is uh, in a room, the, two, the room where they're just like, they're just hanging out. And you get to see the two of them kind of interacting and what their life is really like. And I really think that one's fun too. Who else has a question? Yes. It's really busy. <laughs> no, you guys, you, do you guys know about the broadcast stubs? Just people watch broadcast stubs. Okay, just in case you don't know, it's gonna sound like a commercial, but just deal with it for five seconds and I promise I won't ever talk about it again. Uh, so the broadcast stubs, if you're on Funimation.com and you pay like a monthly rate, you can get elite, elite service. And what that means is that you get like their entire catalog on their site. And then when shows come on in Japan, like two days later they're, uh, what do you call it? Subtitled, duh. Uh, they're subtitled and put up on their site. So you can watch it uh, subtitled two days after it plays in Japan. Then a month after the day that it airs in Japan, you can get it dubbed on the site. It is the fastest we have ever turned around things like, I mean, like it used to take a year back in the day when we worked on, Ex on Excel Saga. It was like a year from start to finish. This is like a month. <laughs> so at first we knew Space Dandy was a test. So like when we did Space Dandy, um, as writers of the show, we literally got two days to write a script and you normally get like a week. So we were like, I know this is a test for something, but I don't know what. It was really, it was horrifying at first because it's like, hey, do this in like a third of the time that you normally do it and be funny. I mean, it has to be funny. So it was really scared, but I kind of learned to trust my humor and my judgment more. So it kind of prepared us for what was coming. The first season of broadcast dubs was uh, chaotic at best because we had like 10 shows or something that we had to, yeah, it was so many. Yeah, it was a lot, a lot of shows. So you had all of those actors working all of those hours, plus uh, writers and directors, just everybody was working like 10, 12 hours a day, every day. Um, for me, it was taxing because the two shows that I wrote were Tokyo Ghoul and Yona of the Dawn. So complete different spectrums and they both picked up in the middle. Yeah, that's not fun. At least Tokyo Ghoul, I got to write all together. Yona, I literally had to start from 13 and then go back to the beginning and then go back through everything for the DVD release to make sure that it's all good. So that was a little tricky. And then with the, with... I'm not used to that that schedule of recording anymore. Like we've gotten really lazy nowadays where it's like, oh, I'm gonna do three hours here, four hours here. Maybe I'll have a full eight hour day every once in a while. Oof, I'm so tired. Uh, <laughs> but it's not like back in the day with ADV for a while, we were working you know, 10 to 10. Like you would go into this studio and then go into that studio and then go over there and go over here. But it's been such a long time since I've had to do that, that getting back into that zone was difficult at first. I was like, wait, you want me to do what? Okay, now I'm a princess. Okay, now I'm, 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 I'm trying to kill Kaneki, and now I'm, I'm a lesbian bear, and now I'm... <laughs> so <laughs> there was a lot of going from studio to studio and going, what am I doing now? What, what, what show is this? And a lot of also what people don't think about is uh, warming up, because like I and tend to run the spectrum, so they'll call me in for like show by, show by rock, where I'm like, everything's weird. And then they'll call me in for like Tokyo Ghoul where Rize, once she's like all ghouled out, sometimes she can get way down in here. And so to be able to do those two things, there's a whole spectrum in the middle that you have to be able to warm up. And if you can't do that, then you get to the studio and you're like, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, you hear, you hear people just walking around like, blah, 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 like <laughs> warming up, doing craziness. But there was a period in time, I want to say after like the second season of broadcast stubs, that people were like, it's enough. We're all tired. We need a little bit of a break. And I think Funimation saw that, and that's why they kind of pulled back a little bit, because they were like, we don't want to kill everybody. Yeah. We like, we like our actors and directors and writers. We don't want to kill them and the poor translators. 
poor translators. <laughs> I don't even know how they do it. And then things, what you don't realize is when we're working on stuff, it changes even as we're going along. So like you're doing stuff for the broadcast dub and then it'll change. And then for the DVD release, it's got to change again. And things are still being updated and licensors are sending terms and all this craziness. So it can be very stressful, but all in all, it's anime and we love it and that's why we do it. So, but yeah, there's been several times during the broadcast dub situation where I wanted to flip tables. <laughs> Micah Solu saw it and I had a, a comment what, like one night, it was really late and we were both in a studio and I just looked at him and he went, he was like, are you okay? You okay? All right, that was a good conversation, let's go. <laughs> Just because we both had felt like we'd been through the, the trenches a little bit, but uh, it's better now. We're a little more rested. Everything is a little more organized. The only thing that um, I see being a problem in the future is that now the broadcast dubs have become a hit. And so they're like, sweet, all these new shows or second seasons of shows, we're going to do broadcast dubs for them, even though people live out of town. Cause a lot of, the first thing a lot of out-of-town actors want to do is drive to Dallas weekly not. Uh, so that's the only problems I see coming up. But otherwise, I think everybody's settled. It's calmed down. Now we're still doing DVD dubs. So it's not like we just do the broadcast dubs. So everything's kind of chilled out a little bit. And I think as we go on even more so, it'll start to kind of even out a little. But there was a little period of craziness where we were all like, make it stop, please. It's moving too fast. But yeah, they think we're better now. Or we're getting there anyway. Who else has a question? Yes. I love it. So you might not remember, but, uh, I probably will. With the, uh, the script and ghost story. Yeah. Everybody always asks. I, I, and I, every time I'm like, how long will it take before someone asks about ghost story? Good job. Good job. Early on. Good job. Um, that one, okay, so what happened is way back in the day, ADV uh, was approached about this show. I don't know if it was like, sometimes when you license a show in Japan, you get like a group deal. So they'll be like, hey, here's this really awesome show you want. But to get this show, you have to take this crappy show nobody wants. Eh? You know, so sometimes those kind of deals happen. So I don't know if it was that or if it was just some, they went after it. I don't know. But it didn't do well in Japan. It's not that it was a bad show. It's just kind of a eh, show, you know. Um, so it didn't do very well over there. So they came, you know, talked to ADB and they were like, please, we want to get our money back. Like we're bleeding money on the show. You can do whatever you want with it. And those were probably the last words <laughs> they shouldn't have said. Uh, so Stephen Foster was the director at the time, and he's like, all right, so we can do whatever we want with it. Sweet. <laughs> so we kept the names of the characters and you know the, the, the surroundings, the situation, basic. Uh, that's about it. Everything else changed. Um, it's so funny, though, because Everybody now is like, oh my God, ghost stories. I love it. I love ghost stories. It's so great. But back then, we seriously were worried that we were going to get our butts kicked for doing that because people were like, how dare they release a dub that is not exactly the translation? Blah. It was really like people would come and like start crap with us at conventions. Like, how dare you? And it's like, look, dude, I'm just an actor. I just do what I'm told. If you got a beef, you're going to have to go find somebody else in Houston and not me. Um, but yeah, we improvised a lot. Like Stephen Foster would have the translation there, but we never actually used it. And it was so fun because we got to break that fourth wall. So like we actually got to speak to the audience. So like when there was English, we would comment on the English. Or if the flaps were weird, we would talk about how the flaps were weird. Or uh, subject matter, Stephen was like, I want to make sure that this is an equal opportunity offender. So let's offend everyone. So there are some older jokes in there now, like poor Christian Slater. We just really gave him a hard time. I don't even know if anybody knows who that is anymore. Uh, but overall, you know, it's one of those things that's funny that all these years later, like people are still talking about it. And I think that's what's awesome. And somebody in Japan is very happy that they got their money back. And that's really what, what matters at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, I don't think that will ever happen again. That was like a one time thing. It's not very often that people put a lot of blood, sweat into tears into something and go, here, do whatever you want with it. Uh, <laughs> So it was a very, a very fun experience to be a part of. There was talk for a while that, you know, maybe they'll do Ghost Story season two to the exact same animation. 
that would have been awesome. But uh, Disco Tech got the rights and is actually releasing it now. So that's pretty awesome, too. You can actually buy it. I love it. Yes. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. What were your, what, it, it's been a long time since that show, but what, what, are, your, what are your thoughts on the show? What did you like about it? Um, well, first of all, it was really cool for me because uh, I don't remember actually watching Robotech when I was a kid, but I knew I must have known about Robotech when I was a kid because I had a Lisa Hayes doll. And so it's really weird to turn around years later and when I was cast as Misa Hayase, I looked at the character and I went, I had that doll. Holy crap, when I was a kid, I totally had that doll, but her name was different. They're like, oh yeah, Lisa Hayes from Rose Robotech. And I was like, holy crap. So it was kind of neat to kind of come full circle and get to play that character. Um, it was a great experience. Working with Mari was awesome. You know, it's very, it's probably the only time I will actually get to work with one of the original Seiyu on a project that was awesome. But one thing I would like to clear up is that on a lot of the sites, it says that I did that dub back in 1980 something. Yeah, because the show is from 1980. Right, because the show is from 80. And I'm like, you guys, I was like five. <laughs> you were that good. I was that good, yeah. I was that good. I was playing an adult at five. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, but I, it was a great show. And I love, uh, Matt Greenfield was the director, and I love working with him. He's awesome. I like to give him a hard time. I, I have a question. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, can, Jose. Can what you is ask the audience to come up to the microphones because we are recording this? Oh, this sure. Pretty Sorry. please, and we want to hear their voices and their questions. Yes. Um, video now, editing. Now everybody's like, I don't want to do it anymore. Video <laughs> editing. Please edit this out. Thank you. Yeah. And scene. <laughs> I guess if y'all want to make a line at the microphone. Okay. Um, with uh, Mikagura School Suite with yeah. Erna. Uh, was that one of those shows where you basically were given a lot of improvisation abilities, or was it just all scripted to be as over the top, insane, crazy as she is? It was, uh, if you haven't seen Mikagura School Suite or Mikagura School Suite, hello. Hello. Uh, <laughs> um, it's a really fun show. Uh, it was scripted by Jamie, so I didn't have to. Uh, like improv at all because it's Jamie and she and I pretty much have one brain. Uh, <laughs> so it's almost like she wrote it with me in mind and then I was able to deliver it how I thought Jamie would think I would deliver it, if that sounds right. <laughs> that sounds very weird and kind of otherworldly. But it was kind of one big circle and she wrote it hoping it was going to be me. So it's kind of nice to have people write something for you and then to be able to do it because it's like, oh, I know how she wanted me to do this. Oh, and then to have Sonny Strait, who plays Krillin and is a fantastic voice actor all on his own, but to have him back in the booth directing was awesome because he let me do whatever I wanted, which might have been a bad choice sometimes because he'd be like, can you bring that back just a little bit? Because I'm one of those actors that I go into the booth and I'm like, I am not easily, well, you can tell, I'm not easily embarrassed, I'm not shy, I'm like, blah, 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 just crazy. And so he let me do whatever I wanted and that was pretty awesome because I got to be insane, and she's insane, and I think that, uh, you know, I was exhausted every time I would finish, but I absolutely adore her. She's one of my favorites. I've got a little ear and a keychain thing on my keychain. I love her. I love her. Who else? Hello. Hello. Uh, I was wondering, uh, when I first saw Moa in Show <laughs> Firewalk, I yes. knew when it was going to be dubbed. I knew it was going to be you Yay. to do her voice, and uh, how much fun was it to voice someone as kooky as Moa? She's super, super fun. Uh, she's so out there and zany. And of course, I don't get to play. I should say restate that. It's not that I don't get to. I don't play as much of the squeaky little bitty girls anymore because there's a lot of young girls that have come in and kind of taken that. So they're like, hey, we got this covered. You go do this other stuff that people can't do. But it's been fun to kind of revisit that because for so long, that's all I did. So uh, Moa, though, she's so cute. And everybody else has like a, a sincere purpose to the show that drives the storyline forward, except for Moa. She's kind of like the glitter on the side. 
like, hey, I do all these crazy things. I might be from outer space. Woo, yay. Uh, <laughs> but I absolutely adore her. And I love Sanrio. Like, my first job ever was at a Sanrio store. And I voiced Hello Kitty for a while. So anything Sanrio does, in my opinion, is gold. So, And we might, I probably shouldn't say anything. You'll want to get the DVDs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You'll want to get the DVDs because they're things that we couldn't do on a broadcast of schedule that we will be doing for DVDs. How, yes, ma'am. How weird was it to voice Mio from MM? Oh, <laughs> she was fun. To be quite honest, uh, funny story, I was the third voice actress to play Mio, and the reason I was able to do it is because the first two voice actresses turned it down because the subject matter was so questionable. So Mio is my I have no morals character because <laughs> they were like, call Monica, she'll do it. Yep. And I really, when I got in there, I was like, really? I, there's, this isn't bad at all. They're like, I know, I know. But, you know, we're in Texas and it's part of the Bible Belt and all that stuff so people get a little weird. I loved it. I thought it was a blast. I loved smacking everybody around me with a giant paddle. Um, and I think she's a lot of fun. So I was ha more than happy to play Mio. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Hello. I was wondering why they didn't finish Dead Man Wonderland. Um, as far as I know, that's it. I mean, like, as far as the manga, is there something else? Oh, yeah. I don't know. My friends gave me a stupid question, I think. <laughs> I mean, is there, I mean, as far as I know, I know the manga is continued. Oh, is it done? I think what happened with Dead Man Wonderland, unfortunately, Dead Man is my, one of my favorite shows ever. Like, it's I absolutely, really I love the dark, gritty stuff. But for some reason, it didn't do as well in Japan as it's done here. So it's done really, really well here, but not as well as J in Japan. And that's kind of the quandary that we have on a lot of shows. Right, so stuff that does well in Japan doesn't always do well here, and then vice versa. But the problem is, is that they're the ones who create it. <laughs> So if it's really good and everybody here loves it, it's really hard to go to them and go, hey, you know that thing that didn't sell well over there? Could you make more of it for us? <laughs> yeah. Just one thing. America loves violence. Well, and, you know, panty and stocking and stuff like that, you know. So I, I would love for there to be more. Yeah. I would totally, I would jump on that in a heartbeat. I would pull out my, yay, content, it's red bean buns, woo! I'd be all about it. <laughs> Uh, but unfortunately, at this point, I don't think right. there's Thank any you. plans for it. No problem. Yes. yes. For, uh, oh, you have to yeah. squish. <laughs> Sorry. One of two questions. The first one's going to be more about your everyday life with Jamie, because I know you two share one brain. Yes. And I know how much fun you have with her. Yes. Uh, how much banter and how much real thrill do you two have just picking at each other? I just want to say real quick, I love how he's slightly adjusting it so you can slightly <laughs> stand along there. with there it. There we go. That was pretty brilliant. Thank you, sir. Um, I think that I've joked a lot, but I think if cameras followed Jamie and I around, and I'm sure a lot of people say this, but I really think that we would make an awesome reality show. Like, I think people would probably be like, holy crap, what is wrong with them? And at the same time, want to hang out with us because we are insane. Uh, but in the best kind of way, uh, she and I have been known to like go to, there's this place over by us that has a sushi sake happy hour. We've been known to show up at four and leave at eight. You know, <laughs> we've known to tweet while we're doing that, which probably isn't a good idea because then Monica comes out as being con as confirming information she never confirmed because she had too many beers. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, um, but yeah, we have a lot of fun. We just had a, our our annual birthday party. We had a pre Halloween party last weekend, so that was fun. But um, it's fun when you get to meet people who you share so much in common with that you instantly click, and Jamie was definitely one of those people. So. Yeah, I remember when she first met you, it was on Burst Angel as Joe. Yeah, she had no idea that I sounded like this. Yeah. She thought she thought that I sounded like this. She was like, oh, crap, you don't sound like that at all. <laughs> and the other question I had was, I saw you in an interview a while back, uh, how you adore harem genre anime. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my deal. Yeah. Like, Rosario Vampire has got themes. Like, there's other stuff going on other than this hapless dude that's just got a bunch of girls, like, hanging on him. As long as a harem show has a good theme and has something going for it, like good characters, then I'm okay. Yeah. I have worked on a handful of harem shows where it's like, why does this exist? <laughs> and I, I tell people all the time, I'm like, ladies, 
It's not worth it. <laughs> Do not fight your friends for one hapless dude. There are plenty of fish in the sea. Find your own man. Let somebody else have him. Men, women do not fall from the sky. If they do, there's something wrong with them. <laughs> and if you've got seven girls chasing after you, it's probably a good choice to pick one, stick with it, and let the others free. Huh? Shovel's a little different because that's so dramatic. You know what I mean? Like, and like I'm saying, like, there are a lot of, of harem shows that are inherently good. And I love that now the big thing is the switch with the uh, male harem. I love that. I'm like, yeah, bring me like eight guys. As long as it's, <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's even playing field, you know what I mean? Well, like, well, you've I've, already picked your one. You're good. Right, exactly. Yeah. I've got the one. But you know, in anime, yeah. it'd be fun to have like, you know, eight dudes, whatever. But the thing is, and then it's the dudes getting the dudes. Like, where do the girls come in? Right. There's no girls in there. Well, I mean, there is. Yeah, that's true. She doesn't really get any of the dudes, though, does she? <laughs> See? Not fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not the same. I'm going to go start an anime, and it's going to be one chick with, like, and I guess, <laughs> with a whole bunch of dudes, like 28 different dudes that are all in love with her. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> huh? That's true. That is kind of like that. And I guess kind of Oron High School is kind of like that. All right. It's even. But yeah, some of them I, I enjoy. It's just that I want to make sure that like, young, especially the young, young fans, like I don't want dudes to think like, hey, you don't have to put any effort into it. Girls are just going to fall all over your it's feet. Just transfer to a new school. Right. Exactly. Transfer to a new school and you'll see panties all day long. That's how it works. <laughs> Right. I don't want I don't want people to grow up thinking that, and I don't want girls like that's the only thing is to me, um, they kind of send a bad message to young girls, and so I want young girls to know that like hey, as long as you understand that this is an anime, it's not real life, and and don't let guys walk all over you, you'll be good. <laughs> Thank you very much for no everything. Problem.